Today, I'm gonna show you how to use two-point perspective to start rotating things. It's rare that a scene will have everything facing directly toward the viewer. So what do we do when something rotates? Well, we add a second vanishing point to converge both sides. And this doesn't just apply to drawing boxes and buildings. In the next project, I'll show you how I use two-point perspective to give my portrait drawings better structure. I think that two-point perspective is the most commonly used perspective system. It gives us the freedom to walk around and look around our scene, while also simplifying the vertical y-axis to parallel lines. The only time we really need to add a third point is if we're drawing an extreme up or down angle in a scene, like flying over, like looking down at a city. But this doesn't happen very often, so we can usually get away with the parallel verticals. Imagine that you're looking through a window, and we can use the frame of this video as our window. Everything that you see through this window is what you draw on your paper, or within some rectangle on your paper. This is called the picture plane, and it's perpendicular to your line of sight. Your line of sight is just the direction you're looking, which is directly at me. The picture plane is perpendicular. It's this way. Technically, it doesn't have to be perpendicular, but then it gets all wonky and distorted. So just forget I mentioned it. So with one point perspective, we were looking directly at this plane. None of the edges are going away from us, so we don't have to converge any of them into the distance. But as soon as I rotate this box, even just a little, now this edge is farther from you than this one. When something gets farther away, it appears smaller. So we have to converge the edges of this plane to a vanishing point. The vertical edges stay vertical because we didn't rotate them this way. Every part of this edge is the same distance from the picture plane. So these edges stay vertical. Okay, so let's jump in and draw a box in two-point perspective. The first thing I like to do is establish my horizon line, or at least think about it. We already learned this in the last lesson for one-point perspective, so let's not cover it again. So there's my horizon line. And in this example, I'm going to distribute the two points evenly, just to see what happens. So they're gonna be here and here. And right in the middle, I'm gonna place the edge of the box. So. One point perspective, we're looking directly at it. We rotated it, and now I'm gonna establish this edge right in here. It's the closest edge to me, and then from there, we're going to kind of expand out in each direction. So just for this one example, I'm gonna place this kind of in the middle between the two points. It doesn't have to be there, it's just that I'm showing you this one right now. Now, from these two corners of that edge, I'm going to extend these lines, this, this plane over here, towards this point. Same thing on this side. And I don't have to draw every line all the way to the vanishing point. I just have to imagine that if it continued, it would hit that point. And then I kind of cut these off. And now to establish the top plane, I just go from these corners that I have now, and from there converge it. And these are gonna start getting more and more horizontal. The closer we get to that horizon line, the more eye level things become and they get more and more foreshortened. And so we're not seeing as much of it. So that's kind of a, a common mistake is that as you get closer, you're supposed to flatten it, but people will just draw it up more than it actually should be to make it more of a square because we know that the top of a box is a square or a rectangle to see how this corner over here from here to here is very flat it's almost a horizontal line whereas down here it's very pointy because they're just farther away if down here it would be really pointy really distorted so we have all these converging lines, these three going to this vanishing point, and these three going to that vanishing point. Now the vertical axis, these are all perfectly vertical and they're parallel because we have not rotated our box down or up. 
So we have said that this is two point perspective. This is a decision we made and the box is still parallel. It's facing the picture plane. We might still be above it or we might be below it, but it's still parallel to the picture plane overall. We haven't rotated it this way. And because this was in the middle, these two planes are equal. Now, what happens when we start rotating this box? What happens to these vanishing points? As we rotate the box, one point gets closer to the middle and the other gets farther. All right, let's get another picture plane in there. And this time, just to show you this as an example, I'm gonna make the horizon line a little bit uneven. It's going up, all right? So I'm gonna put the first vanishing point right here, and then the second vanishing point, I'm gonna put farther away. Let's just say it's outside of the picture plane that I'm drawing. And then instead of putting that box again between the two points, I'm gonna put it over here. And notice what I did here. I drew that edge perpendicular to the horizon line because I've now decided that my eye level, I am tilted. And so the ground is tilted. My whole world is tilted. So if I'm drawing a box that is on the ground, I have not tilted it in any way. I've only rotated it, spun it around on that vertical, vertical axis. If that's happening, that's all, then it's gonna be perpendicular to the horizon line, right? Because if you stand something up on the ground, straight up, it's vertical, right? If I do this, now I'm rotating it. So now what happens to these planes because the vanishing points are so different? This one's really close, this one's really far. So you see how this one is converging quite a bit. It's getting smaller really fast. This one is not getting smaller really fast. It stays, you know, fairly parallel just because it takes a lot longer for it to reach its point. So this one looks more like a perfect square. Not really, it's still converging, just less. So it's gonna be uh, wider. Whereas this point is getting smaller and smaller, it's foreshortening a lot more. And so it's gonna be visibly a lot shorter. But the illusion is that these are actually the same. And it's because of this illusion that these are getting smaller, so they're moving away from us faster. So it looks like this is the same size as this. It's all an illusion. The whole, all, all the perspective is just an illusion. Same thing with the top. So a few things to review here. The first one is when the object is closer to one point, it's as if this point is rotating this whole box in this way. The line, both of these vanishing points moved this way, that means the box rotated this way. The other one is when the horizon line is shifted, these vertical y-axis lines are not vertical anymore, but they're still perpendicular to the horizon line, they're still, and they're still parallel in two-point perspective. As we rotate this box more and more, this vanishing point gets farther and farther away, and these edges become more and more horizontal until eventually we reach the point where this plane faces directly at us and the vanishing point is infinitely far away. The lines become parallel horizontally and we're back at one point perspective. If we continue rotating it, that vanishing point jumps to the other side and we repeat the whole thing again. So sometimes a plane is so close to facing directly at us, but not quite there, not quite perfectly horizontal, that the vanishing point is really far away. I'd need a sheet of paper like five feet long to plot that vanishing point. And it's actually very common for a vanishing point to be outside the borders of our page. Maybe not that far, but just like somewhere far enough that it's kind of impractical to even plot it. So here's a trick. You can create a unit grid on the edge of the page. Basically, if we did project the lines to a distant vanishing point, they would scale down proportionally as they go farther away. And if the edge of the paper was here, we can just figure out where the lines cross the edge. 
instead of taking them all the way to the vanishing point. And we have an accurate grid that leads to a point really far away. So let me show you. So we know that at the horizon, the line will be pretty much parallel to the horizon, right? It leads to the vanishing point at the same angle. And then we have to make a decision of how much convergence we want kind of near the bottom, right? Like where's the vanishing point? Is it somewhere over here or is it farther away over there, right? And so if it's farther away, let's say it's like something like that, really far away. We'll just plot an angle somewhere low on, the, on our page. And then in between this and this, we just need to create convergence that all leads to the same vanishing point. And I already mentioned that they scale proportionally. And so if the halfway mark here is there, then the halfway mark, like right here where it crosses the border is here, then we know that the convergence at this level is something like this. And then we can divide these in half. And I'm being kind of rough. I'm not measuring any of these distances. And if I want, I can keep going. I can create the same units above the horizon. So now I have a grid for how much convergence there is. And this grid is accurate. All these points lead eventually to a vanishing point that's far away, but I don't have to actually consider that far away vanishing point. I just need to follow this grid. And this is kind of a lot of lines. I could have maybe just put two in there and that would have been enough for me to be able to visualize everything in between, close enough. So now if I want to draw a box and let's say one of the vanishing points is here and the other vanishing point is really far away, like I plotted, and I want to put a box, say, somewhere here, Let's just put it like this. And I don't even need to put them on the lines. Let's just say I say the bottom of the box is actually right here, right? Not on one of these lines. Then I can, I can still imagine a line in between these two. It's not that difficult. I mean, I can get really close. And then up. And then this one is right on the line. And then on the other side, this right plane is going to this vanishing point and I can just estimate those angles pretty accurately because it's just right there. And let's just say this box ends right here. And then again, this angle here is going to be between this and this. And I will just estimate that visually. So this is a little trick that, you know, if you are doing something that you're spending a little bit more time on, you can quickly plot these angles on there and set yourself up to be much more accurate. Eventually, you might get to the point where when you're sketching, you don't even need to get, you know, plot things out. You just establish your horizon and then you say, well, down here I have a box and the bottom edge is like this and and then I, you can kind of visualize that and then you say, and then up here will be like that, right? And then you, that's all you need. And then anything you draw in between, you just say, well, I can kind of imagine that angle between these two and this angle. And then maybe this one's over here. And you can more intuitively do this based on just a few little cues that you put for yourself on the page. But it does help to practice this first so that you kind of ingrain this kind of thinking into your mind and it becomes more intuitive over time. All right, so let's do something a little bit more challenging than just a single box floating in space. Let's say we're drawing a stack of books. All right, books are pretty much just boxes, they're flat, vertically. So I'm going to have one vanishing point here and another one kind of far away that I'm just going to imagine. I'm going to do this a little bit more intuitively. So I'm going to put the first book right here. Bring it towards this vanishing point. Let's say that the, these books are longer 
this way, right? This is the side binding of the books. Okay, so far everything's the same as what I already showed you. So there's my first book. Now if I want to put another book on top, but let's say it's a different size. Let's say this one's a little bit smaller, but fatter. I'm gonna say, well, the corner of this one, let's put it like right here. Let's make it a little bit fatter. Now I'm gonna do the same thing from this bottom corner, project it out to this exact same vanishing point. This one, same thing. And as I'm moving these up, I am considering that by the time I get up to the horizon, they should get horizontal. I'm just slowly converging them. Okay, so there's my second book. Different size, but still, these edges are all parallel and they're all going to the same two vanishing points. Now, what happens if the third book that I put on top rotates a little bit more, right? These books are kind of rotated so that I'm seeing more of this side than this side. But now let's rotate it a little bit. So the next book I'm gonna put a little bit closer to us. So let's do, and it's also gonna be pretty fat. Something like here. And I wanna rotate this so that this vanishing point over here is a little bit closer. Maybe not too much closer, but like, like that. So that's actually quite a bit closer. <laughs> like now we're saying that this vanishing point is over here. So that means that this vanishing point is gonna be really far away now. Let's curve that binding a little bit. So now we got this giant fat book on top of this one. It's covering up most of this, but I still have some evidence of what's going on underneath. And because I had x-ray vision here and I could, I plotted out everything, I know that everything here is correct or close enough because I am approximating a lot of things. So a really common question at this point is how do you know where to put the second vanishing point. Like if I decided that my first one, I'm moving it here, how do I know how far to move the second one? And unfortunately, that's really complicated. There is a way to do it, it's called a plan projection, but it's kind of outside the scope of this course. Uh, it does involve a longer process of projecting things and lots of planning and all that. And that we're saving for Marshall Vandruff's upcoming perspective course. In this course, I want to get you guys more to, to be able to do all this stuff kind of intuitively, where it's close enough. And where when you do make a mistake that's visually wrong, where you can tell it doesn't look good, that you use your judgment to just make those corrections and get better at seeing those mistakes and making those corrections. Uh, so for now, if you, you kind of just have to do trial and error. Move that point far away, draw it where this kind of feels like a right angle to a book, and if it looks wrong, adjust it and slowly get better over time. That's gonna have to be the solution, otherwise we're just gonna get into months and months and months of really complicated theory and not move forward with what I think is more important fundamental concepts to get you guys better at drawing faster. Um, for now, this will be good enough. And let's say we want to do another one, but this time let's make it facing directly at us, right? So let's put it like right there along the edge. And the vanishing point is going to be right there. 
And then it's like, how large do I make this plane, right? Well, what I can do visually is see like, how much smaller are they getting every time I go up? So this one's pretty big. This one is a little bit flatter. This one's a little bit flatter. This one's gonna be even flatter than that. So let's just cut it off like right there. So now we're, we kind of mixed two point and one point in the same scene. That's kind of interesting. And then again, as I get closer and closer to this horizon, It's gonna get flatter and flatter. And I can barely see the top of this book. And then the next one is up here. And now we're starting to go down. Because now this book is above our eye line. Or this one actually going farther away. I mixed up the vanishing points. This one is going this way farther. This one's going to this one. So we can imagine if we just keep this going, we can keep stacking these books higher and higher. Let's just say this is, this is the corner. Up here, the book will be like this. And if they were all parallel, they would be just slowly converging like that. So now each book has its own set of two points. And this can get really complicated really fast. I definitely don't want you guys plotting 20 points in your scenes. Again, that's a bit outside of the purpose of this course, but I wanted to show this to you so that you understand how it works. I think if you're, if this is your first time doing two point perspective, as I just introduced it to you, I would not do that yet. Get comfortable with just placing things in two point perspective that are all parallel to each other. Maybe just kind of shift them around the scene up and down, left and right, in and out, just like we did with one point perspective, but now with two. If you're level two, you can start practicing doing warm-ups where you're actually turning things in the same scene and seeing like how hard is that for you? Are you able to visualize what those angle relationships will be and do they look wrong or not? Um, so start playing around with all that stuff and see if you're ready for, for spinning or not. If not, then that's totally fine. Get comfortable with parallel box like things. Um, but I'm going to introduce you to a warm up and then a project in the next few videos. So stay tuned. Thanks guys.